hello everyone so today i thought i'll probably uh, create uh, one more script for you in fact uh, <clears throat> i wanted to do it but uh, i also received uh, one comment from uh, one of my subscriber i believe and uh, he wanted me to write a script share a script to update an issue now we have talked about how to uh, retrieve the issue how to create an issue and uh, of course you may want to update let us say a custom field or a summary or maybe any 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 field that you have now the issue that i'm looking at is uh, right now on the right on the left hand side which is an-233 and uh, when you have to update the issue existing issue you have to use one uh, one uh, rest endpoint called uh, rest api3 issue and you basically need to use uh, the issue key in the in the url in the endpoint and of course you have to pass the body the body that i'm going to pass here is actually not massively uh, different from uh, your body that you use in the issue creation so when you create an issue you create any issue you have to pass in the project id i believe and uh, the issue type id these two fields are definitely uh, necessary but when you have to modify the issue you just have to use uh, you don't basically you don't really need to pass in the project id and issue type id because those fields are already there and uh, uh, right now we are updating the issue not really moving the issue so when you when you uh, when you update the issue you basically need uh, <clears throat> the issue key now what i'll do in this particular script i will do few things so i will modify the um, i will modify the uh, the priority so if the if you if you want you can also modify system fields uh, which is of course very straightforward and simple thing to do then of course you can also modify the summary or uh, the description for example but in this example i'll probably create a couple of videos on uh, updating an issue because it is actually very important and uh, many people want to do it uh, or, or or maybe it is also applicable for the creation of the issue so basically when you are dealing with fields so let us say you have a number field or you have, you have a text field or maybe you have let us say a, a cascading select list or a select list you need to know the right body that you need to use now in this video what i'll do i'll simply create uh, or not create but i'll simply update an issue with uh, of course uh, a few fields most of them are uh, system fields like description priority and summary but i will also update the number field now if you look at the json here the json is of course uh, mostly same as uh, uh, what we did when we created the issue so we have summary priority and for custom field of type number you have to basically pass pass it as it is like you know just custom field uh, within the codes and of course the id and by the way i talked about how to fetch the custom field id if you remember so this is where you can actually use that other script to f to retrieve the custom field so if you are dealing with numbers you don't have to enclose the value in the codes and if you look at this particular uh, issue here so the field is uh, one two three four so let me just update the field to maybe something else let us see if we have nine 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 if you can update it there's one thing that i wanted to talk about is when you're dealing with uh, uh i mean if you are if you're update, updating the issue the method should be put so we have talked about get we have talked talk, talked about post for posting something but if you are if you're modifying something then you have to use the put method here and uh, let us let us run the script and see if it works hopefully it will work so let me just find my terminal window if i can yep this is my terminal window and if i click on if i run this not click on but if i run the script it will give you of course this response like right now we have 204 which is good uh, so if you now look at your issue here if you refresh it hopefully it will update uh, things uh, the summary and the and the description is basically the same uh, in the script so no change but hopefully if you look at the number here the number is now 999 you can actually do similar things with uh, let us say you have a text text based field let me find a field which is nothing but a text field uh, do i have any field maybe i can add it quickly so let us just uh, go to the project settings and uh, what i also want to do in this video is i apart from number field apart from system fields couple of system fields 
number field let us also update uh, the let us also update the uh, text field which is of course similar so i think uh, this issue is the zip story i'll probably add it to both <laughs> to keep it simple so let me just get rid of the sidebar i'll open my default issue screen and i believe i should have like a text field when i'm working on jira i normally create fields with the type for testing purpose because it is easier for me otherwise you have to go to the other, otherwise uh, to find a text field you will have to go to your custom field listing and it, it is a bit of a pain okay so now we are now i think we are done let us now go back to the issue so was it i think it was task so it should work so if we go back to the issue and oh, i think i need to find the the id of the field so let us uh, we can we can actually use the script that we wrote earlier but for the time being so this is the field by the way so for the timing what i'll do i'll simply go to the now just f to show you so issues let us go to issues and uh, then we'll go to the custom fields on the left hand side and the field we are looking for is uh, text field so hopefully i can find it yep i guess this is a field so if you are looking at the field uh if you want to see maybe the field uh, id just try to click on it or somewhere let me just you know try to expand this window slightly so i can see it so if i hover my mouse on top of this edit i can see the custom field id id is 10114 10114 remember it okay we'll have to use it 10114 so let me just go back to the script and uh, i will use maybe here a variable text underscore field 10114 i think so <laughs> Okay, I'll probably write the field here uh, first. Okay, so we are talking about custom field underscore one zero one one four. Hopefully, this is the right one. And if it is a string, we have to enclose it in double quotes. And I'll use here uh, percentage s, which we will replace later on. But let me use a variable. Let me declare a variable to variable variable on top. And uh, this. this is a text field great so i will go down here and what i'm going to do is i have this right after my previous custom field which is uh, my text field so i'll go to my variable here json final when i'm generating the final json with all the values replaced so let us use the variable name hopefully here dollar text underscore field let us see if it works so no we do have an error which is fine so expecting a comma so we know that something is wrong so i'm sure i missed something Okay, come on. There should be a comma here. It is taking couple of seconds. Usually it is not that slow, but it's okay. It could be my it could be the Wi-Fi card, the the weak Wi-Fi card that I have on my laptop. So, come on. So, it is taking some time, but what I'll do, I'll try to we will refresh the issue here do we have an any error i think we do have an error here no no uh, i think i did something wrong i think i did i no i th I, th i thought i'll probably I i'm not really using the right extension but i i am so let me just go back to the issue and uh, refresh the oh so i lost my internet connection which is not really i mean it is not really the internet connection but it is basically the wifi card and it is really annoying but i guess uh, it will come back 
I'll just do. Uh, this is also something that you can do in your script, by the way. If things don't work, so let me just do it again. Let me just run it again because now it is running on the left hand side. On the right hand side, I can see uh, the error uh, that it was not running. But if you look at the text field, it will it should show you when, of course, the script finishes. Let me just run it one more time. I think the connection is now fine, but uh, let me just do it again. And uh, in the meantime, I'll try to refresh my screen, my issue. I think the connection is still not proper, but we'll, wa we'll wait for it. So we are experiencing some technical issues. Okay, so I think there, there's something with something wrong with the connection. It is not yet working. Let me just refresh maybe with this, this page or I'll open maybe my own website. RaviSaga.in Okay, something is definitely not correct. Okay, and I think now we are back. Hopefully, I can see something. Let me just run it. Hopefully it will, I mean, we are making a rest call from terminal, so it should not consume too much bandwidth. <laughs> so hopefully it will work. I cannot pause the video because I, I have no way to pause the video, but uh, just bear with me. Okay, so some something is definitely wrong. So, so sorry, apologies for this, but hopefully the script will work. Could not resolve Jira tutorial. Okay, so we are still facing issues. Let me just run it one more time. Okay, now I think it worked. So let us just go back because I can see on top, hopefully the output, uh, which is not an error. So let me just go back to the issue and uh, refresh it. And uh, you can actually use the script by the way, if you are following these series on uh, on uh, updating issues or doing something with Jira REST API, uh, you can actually uh, take a look at the uh, script that I have. You will find the link in the description, by the way. So you can take a look at the co code, uh, use it, modify it, but do whatever you want to do, do with it. The, uh, the idea here is to learn how to do it with, of course, various examples. And as you can see here that this particular field, text field is also updated. And uh, now we have, we have the script that will update the issue. What I will also do is I will make, uh, hopefully in the next video or hopefully soon, I will add in the same script, the ability to also update a select list and a custom or maybe a cascading select list because that is a very common thing that people want to do. So that is all I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.